number of times I lost hope. And that's where I, I came to a point uh, where I had to look away from hope and more towards submission. Today on Christian World News, our interview with Pastor Andrew Brunson. He talks about his time in a Turkish prison cell, his prayer with President Trump in the Oval Office, and what he learned about God through this whole ordeal. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. And I'm Wendy Griffith. Well, after two years held prisoner in Turkey, Pastor Andrew Brunson went from a courtroom to the Oval Office all in less than 24 hours. The world watched as he thanked President Donald Trump and then knelt down to pray for him. The pastor's journey began two long years ago when Turkish officials de detained Brunson and charged him with trying to overthrow the government. In our Christian World News interview, I asked him about that experience and how God got him through. Andrew, how did uh, God sustain you uh, these last 18 months? Well, <laughs> I think through the prayers of God's people, uh, what I've said uh, to my wife, I said, uh, where is all the grace that I expected to come pouring out from these, obviously many people are praying, where is the grace? And what I found is that God was taking me a different route and was not letting me feel or sense uh, the grace that is there that's sustaining me. So I say it was like an unfelt grace, an unseen grace. But then as I look back on the things he brought me through and I realize my incredible weakness, then I say, oh, he was there the whole time. He was carrying me through. The grace was there. I just didn't sense it. Did you ever lose hope? Oh, yes. Uh, especially the first year. I was uh, really broken a number of times. I lost hope. And that's where I, I came to a point uh, where I had to m look away from hope and more towards submission. And uh, the point of the submission was saying, God, if this is what you have for me, I don't have the strength to do this. I can't endure in prison long term for years. I don't want to. But if this is what you have for me, then I want to serve your purposes but then I need you to strengthen me. I need you to pour into me the courage, the strength, the perseverance, the, the steadfastness of Jesus because I don't have it. So every day I would pray for this. And it became my, my cry was, uh, I want to be found worthy to stand before you on that day without regrets uh, from things left undone, from cowardice. So I don't want to be a coward. I don't want to leave undone the, uh, the assignment that you've given me but I need your strength for it. Noreen, you were in prison with uh, Andrew for 13 days, then you had a chance to they let mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. What got you through those 18 months well, when you only had a chance to see uh, Andrew once a week for 35 minutes, it mm -hmm. then got extended to an hour, but what got you through? Yeah, again, first of all, the prayers of people around the world. Uh, some were especially touching to us. All prayers were wonderful. We were really touched by the prayers of the Turkish Church. We were touched by the prayers of Iranians, uh, Chinese. Mm. These are suffering churches. And for, to know that they are praying for us was just very humbling. So that was, there's no question that we were carried on a wave of prayer. Um, yeah, secondly, it's just pressing into the Lord. Mm. I just, I, difficult times, the, that's what we do, right? We have to press into the Lord a whole lot more. So. And I'm sure that there were days when you were getting ready to see your husband, you know, once a week, sure. that you were weak. And, and Absolutely. He, and in Absolutely. some ways you had to, Absolutely. did you have to dig deep in order Absolutely. to be there for him? Absolutely. Yeah. So it was hard to get up in the morning. Every morning I was just very slow to kind of, I'd wake up, I sleep well at night, but I wake up and I'm back in this again and uh, very slow to start my day, but I, I had to just start it with the Lord, definitely. Certain things I would pray through. It wasn't a rote thing, it was fresh every day because sure. I knew how much I needed it. And it actually, there was a shift from, Lord, walk through this day with me to, Lord, you lead me. Mm -hmm. We're still walking together, but you lead me through this day. Um, so definitely spending a lot of time in the presence, sometimes just sitting quietly because I thought, what can I say, Lord? But definitely holding on to him. We are Christian World News. We were reporting on your plight for a very long time. 
literally there were people in some of the most difficult parts of the world, whether it's Afghanistan, Iran, China, Saudi Arabia, all around the world, believers who were facing tremendous challenges, but they knew your story and they prayed. Uh, Amazing. How does that how does that make you feel? Well, I don't I never felt worthy of this prayer. It was astounding to me, as Noreen would tell me. I'm very isolated in prison. But Noreen would, would tell me, these people are praying here, they're praying in this other country. And I'm thinking, why why? Because you know, we we're in a corner of Turkey ministering for years in relative obscurity. Why should all these people be praying for me? And I came to see that the Lord was doing something much bigger than just dealing with me. That there, he was gathering prayer, I think, for, for Turkey, for the purposes that he has for that country and also in the Middle East. So I think I'm a little part of something very big that God is doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why God raised awareness in other countries and had people praying for us. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. George, that's so amazing that you got to sit down with them. I got yeah. to meet them briefly, but you really got to to find out what it was like to be in that Turkish prison. What was that like for you? Well, I mean, it really, you know, you, you get a sense that he's processing this. I mean, yeah. it's only been a, a week, a week uh, uh, since he was released. So it's going to take some time. But clearly he went through an incredible ordeal for the first year. The second year was yeah. much better. But those that first year... Those first few months were very, very difficult, and uh, truly, our, our prayers have been answered. All right. Thank you, George. You're welcome. Well, coming up, we talk with a religious freedom group that fought for Brunson's release and learn how President's Trump, President Trump's tough tactics won the day. God Almighty is a God of blessing. He always wants to bless His people. But how do you get that blessing? And what principles will unlock that secret? In Miraculous Blessings, Pat Robertson shows you how to open the floodgates of God's awesome blessings in your life. In order to have a blessing, you've got to be blessable. Discover what the Bible has to say about God's covenant of blessing, the laws of blessing, and what are the hindrances to the blessings of God. The words of Jesus, they are as valid as the law of gravity, and if we follow those laws, we will be blessed you'll see amazing true stories of everyday people whose lives were rescued and transformed by God's miraculous blessings. But even the doctors acknowledge that this had to be a miracle. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com to become a CBN partner and get miraculous blessings today. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. The American Center for Law and Justice has been fighting for Pastor Brunson's release since the very beginning. And joining us now to share more is senior counsel from the ACLJ, Cece Heil. Cece, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, tell us about the work uh, that the ACLJ had, was doing and has been doing to free Pastor Brunson. Sure. We were retained um, right in the beginning in October of 2016 um, after Pastor Brunson and actually his wife Noreen were arrested. Um, and so we have been working with the Turkish attorney there on the ground as well as with the United States administration and then uh, through international bodies like the United Nations. Yeah, talk about the difference that the Trump administration made in his release. Yeah, it's always critical to get the administration, um, especially the State Department, um, on board in these cases. It is a, an absolute gift 
to have the president or the vice president engage. And so it was wonderful on this case with Pastor Brunson that President Trump was engaged, Vice President Pence was engaged, um, Secretary Pompeo, the entire State Department, um, the embassy. We just had um, full engagement from the administration. And then we had great help from Congress, um, both houses and bipartisan support. So um, the United States was just um, a big advocate in getting Pastor Brunson out. Have you ever seen an administration stand up like this uh, in, in a situation like this, Cece? Never. It's really unprecedented. This this amount of engagement, um, you know, was amazing to us. We've just never seen that. Usually we're pushing and pushing and, you know, asking and asking. And um, they just, they were there every step of the way and helped us every single step of the way. So, um, really unprecedented help. Well, we were very fortunate to have Pastor Brunson and his wife in our studios today. And he was basically saying a week ago today, I was standing in, in a Turkish courtroom, not knowing my fate, not knowing if I was going to receive several life sentences. And literally they they were shocked. Were you guys also shocked a week ago when he was set free instead of getting uh, a sentence? Yeah, you know, I've lived this case, and so every trial date, which there were four, um, I would, of course, stay up all night because, um, you know, it was Turkish time, and just get updates and follow it. And every single trial, we had hope that, you know, he might be released. This one was very much different, especially when I started getting reports from the morning session. Um, all of the witnesses were basically exonerating Pastor Brunson, and those were witnesses put on by the prosecution. Um, so we, we knew something was a little bit different, um, that they were setting up the possibility to release him. But, you know, you never know. We, we just didn't know. And so it was very exciting, um, you know, when the judge made the ruling and we found out that um, there was a conviction, but um, released on time served. So, you know, very great news and a great report. How much a part, how much do you think prayer played a part in his release? Um, I think it was the major part, absolutely. I mean, we do our work as attorneys and we do it well, but it's God who moves the heart of kings and you know, prayer is what also moves God's heart. So I believe it was the faithful prayers of people all over the world that were praying for this release, praying for Turkey, and even praying for you know us at the ACLJ um, and the work that we did. And I, I believe that was crucial and critical. And of course, there are many others who are still behind bars. What does this victory for Pastor Brunson say to persecuted Christians around the world? You know, I... Um, we do international human rights law, so, you know, this is what we do. And unfortunately, there are still many Christians uh, suffering behind bars. And we won't stop our work and efforts, but it is certainly um, very encouraging when we do have a victory and we are able to get someone out and get them back uh, to their family and back to their home. Um, that was just being at Andrews Air Force Base and seeing the Brunsons get off the plane and being reunited with their children, you know, that's why we do this work. Um, so hopefully it does, it does give hope to those um, around the world that, you know, there is hope and that hopefully it also encourage people to keep praying for those people. Yeah. And finally, what other cases are you all working on right now and who should we be praying for? You know, Asiya Bibi is probably the, the one that is uh, most on my mind right now because we're waiting for a verdict. Um, and she has suffered a long time. But there are um, several others that, that um, you know, just and in China, I know that that's, that's an area that we are um, working in because it seems like more and more every day people are being arrested for their faith in China. So I think just, you know, keep, keep every persecuted Christian um, in your prayers and, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to um, effectuate some change and um, get them released. Well, it's a happy day for, uh, a, for the Brunsons, ACLJ, and for all of us who've been praying for so long for his release. And uh, job well done, Cece Heil. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you for keeping this case in the news. That helps very much, too. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Coming up, we bring you more news of the church around the world, including a doctor who left his lucrative career in America to help the poorest of the poor in Africa. 
God Almighty is a God of blessing. He always wants to bless His people. But how do you get that blessing? And what principles will unlock that secret? In Miraculous Blessings, Pat Robertson shows you how to open the floodgates of God's awesome blessings in your life. In order to have a blessing, you've got to be blessable. Discover what the Bible has to say about God's covenant of blessing, the laws of blessing, and what are the hindrances to the blessings of God. The words of Jesus, they are as valid as the law of gravity. And if we follow those laws, we will be blessed you'll see amazing true stories of everyday people whose lives were rescued and transformed by God's miraculous blessings. But even the doctors acknowledge that this had to be a miracle. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com to become a CBN partner and get miraculous blessings today. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. South Korean President Moon Jae-in hand-delivered a special invitation to Pope Francis this week. In a visit to the Vatican, Moon gave the pontiff a personal invitation from North Korea's Kim Jong-un to visit his country. Christianity is outlawed in North Korea, and believers face prison and even death for practicing their faith. David Curry of Open Doors says the pope should accept Kim's invitation and encourage him to loosen restrictions on the church. Curry writes, respectfully, I say to Pope Francis, go, go, and go boldly. Do not let this rare moment pass. Apartheid ended in South Africa more than 20 years ago, but racial tensions are still very high. That along with reports of rampant corruption and high crime. Some wonder if South Africa is headed for civil war. That's why evangelist Angus Buchan is calling Christians together to pray for South Africa in an event called It's Time Pretoria. Our nation is on a knife edge. We are possibly facing a potential civil war. And that's why the nation is coming together in one place at one time to ask the Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, to intervene on our behalf. Organizers say they expect around 5 million people to attend the prayer meeting. Mm. Well, in 2010, Eric Hansen gave up a lucrative medical career in America. He packed his bags and moved his wife and four children 8,000 miles from his home in South Texas. That's right. Now they live in a remote part of Africa where he serves as a Christian missionary doctor. I went to Kenya to hear about this inspiring story. But a sikumbili, pretty tompido, okay? Sour. Dr. Eric Hansen didn't speak Swahili before he moved to Kenya. In fact, he and his family never planned on living on the African continent at all. My wife actually asked me when we were dating if I was going to be a long-term cross-cultural missionary, and I said no, and that was the right answer. So it was a little bit of a bait and switch. Um, what brought us here seven years ago was really God changing our heart. The Hansons moved from Texas to Kenya, specifically to work at Kijabe Hospital, which is about an hour outside the capital city of Nairobi. Where are things with you? Are you okay? Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. So can we Hanson is the lead pediatric surgeon at Kijabe. By definition, he's a missionary doctor, but the definition is changing. The model of the past where mission hospitals were staffed almost exclusively by expatriate missionaries is maybe relevant in some places, but increasingly um, not the best model. And I think that as we train, as the Kenyan staff here at Kajabi grows, uh, half the physicians are, are African here. Scrub team, we have Murevi, 
Francis Kimani is here also, and then we have students. Okay. If that means that in 10, 15, 20 years, I don't, I'm not needed here, that's, that's fantastic. But if I am, that's, that's fine too. To better appreciate the services provided by these Christian hospitals, you just need to look at the numbers. For example, here in Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. If he were simply a surgeon, Hansen could perhaps treat hundreds of children each year. But as a teacher, the reach is far greater. Training these people who will go out and train others, we're talking about tens of thousands of children. That's more than I could ever do in a lifetime. I think it's a great testimony to the love of Christ. Well, we try to put the names of all the children next to um, over their heads yeah. and just let them know that they're loved. Every opportunity we get to care for someone is an opportunity to be love. It's a sentiment shared by many at the hospital, including Chief Surgeon Dr. Peter Bird. So I might be very good at taking appendix out, but someone like Mercy or other, other pastors are really good at just sharing the gospel. That's critical. You can't just be populating hell with all these people with excellent hernia repairs. You've got to be actually doing more than that. Twice each day, doctors, staff, and patients have the opportunity to attend services at the campus chapel. Because of what he did about 2,000 years ago, he's still speaking life to each and every one of us. Still, the challenges here can be great. And there are everyday life challenges living abroad. Hello. The question is on the way. Hello. You know, we don't always have running water. Um, that can be frustrating. Electricity is generally reliable. Good Hey, good morning. Um, what? Do you know where the sugar is? I put it over by the coffee machine, I thought. Yeah. There are days I think I could pack up and we could live a different life somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but ultimately we wouldn't trade this life for anything. Mm -hmm. um, big picture, we're happy here. Um, we have a sense of purpose, a sense of calling. I think the challenges that we have here um, ultimately pale in comparison to the opportunities that we have. The, the, there's the epiglottis, okay? It's a privilege to be able to operate on anybody. From a surgeon standpoint, it's a cool case. From the patient standpoint, we hope we can really help the child and the family. And then from a training standpoint, it's, it's key. Hansen and Bird could easily make six figures in their home countries. Where I come from, Australia, there are many surgeons. I don't, they don't need another surgeon there, really. Instead, they have chosen a different life, a different calling, with its own unique rewards. Uh, living here, we feel like we've hit the lottery. It's about obedience, it's about, you know, love, hopefully response and love, and, and loving other people that are my trainees, but also the, my colleagues and also the patients. So. So let me say a prayer for Moby. God in heaven, we pray for your mercy. I thank you for the chance to take care George of George Thomas, CBN News, Kijabe, Kenya. Great story. We'll learn more about the work of the church around the world at our Christian World News website. Find it by going to cbnnews.com. We'll be right back. When you give, Smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated. 
and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids. Do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah. Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're going to love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. And welcome back to Christian World News. Here in America, it will be years before Florida's panhandle recovers from Hurricane Michael. Packing 155 miles an hour winds, the storm blew buildings off their foundations and snapped trees in two. It's, it's incredible. Those who fled the storm are returning to see what's left of their homes. As Caitlin Burke reports, churches were also hit by the storm, but even so, many are looking to serve their community. Residents who fled Florida's panhandle ahead of Hurricane Michael are beginning to make their way back home to see if there is any home left. It's pretty devastating. Like everybody we know lost their house, everybody and our jobs. It's a devastation, it's like a bomb just went off here. In Panama City Beach, Florida, churches are ready to help, even though they weren't spared destruction. Destiny Worship Center lost the side of its kids building, but that's not stopping them from serving their community. The church is helping to collect and deliver basic necessities to those in need. Well, really, we're beginning to communicate to take supplies here on the beach level and bring them over into Panama City and Springfield and Callaway, where the churches over there were really destroyed, major damage, and allow them to be collection points to take the supplies that people are giving us and distribute to the people in need. Just down the road, Lighthouse Church took a more direct hit. The eye wall of Hurricane Michael came right through this area, and you can see the type of damage that that can do. But the folks here at Lighthouse Church say this is not going to stop them from being the hands and feet of Jesus. Lighthouse Church welcomed all who could make it to worship with them on Sunday. I think we all know that's just a building. It's just a building. We can build a building but we want to make sure our community is taken care of. We want to make sure our members are taken care of. We have teams out right now. We have seven teams running right now with chainsaws and, and front end loaders and we're moving trees and making sure that everybody is accounted for and you know uh, that they can get out and they get the aid that they need. Pastor Cole says that by meeting the basic needs of his community, he's able to pursue them for Christ. I can tell you I love you all day long or I can show you that I love you. So our neighbors, if they've ever wondered if we loved them, they're about to find out for sure when they see one of these Dream Team t-shirts on. We also found Mercy Chefs in Panama City Beach. This ministry can serve up to 18,000 meals a day to victims, volunteers, and first responders. We'll be able to stand up three separate locations around Florida and Georgia as needed. But from those sites, we send food out to different distribution points. As devastated as this area is, God can be found not in the destruction, but in the response. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Panama City Beach, Florida. Wow, wow. I've never seen anything like no. that. And good, good news is that our folks like Operation Blessing yeah. are gonna be there long term. That's right. Okay, folks, thanks so much for joining us this week. Well, until next week, from all of us here at Christian World News, goodbye and God bless you.